What is up everybody, my name is Hyken and this is the HK Gaming Series M. The HK Gaming Series M is a lightweight gaming mouse very reminiscent of the mice produced by Final Mouse, the Air 58 and the Ultralight 2. The size of the Series M is actually between these two mice as well. Uh, the Air 58 is actually a little bit larger than this mouse and the Ultralight 2 is actually just a little bit smaller than this mouse, but the shape is roughly the same. However, unfortunately you won't get the full Final Mouse experience from this mouse because it's actually in stock. It's also only $70. In the box, you get the mouse, rubber grips for the sides and main mouse buttons, an extra set of feet, a plastic dust cover, and a manual. The extra feet are always a welcome addition in my book, especially on a wired mouse where you may want to paracord mod this and you might mess up your original feet too much to salvage them. Weight wise, the box says 54, my scale put it a little higher at about between 55 and 58 grams depending on how the scale is feeling. If we want to compare this weight to the two final mouse mice, the Air 58 comes in at about 58 grams and the Ultralight 2 is down at 50 grams. Again, this mouse is priced at $70, available directly off of Amazon. You're able to get it in black, white, this baby blue Malibu limited edition that I have, and then a red Monza edition. I feel like this is supposed to look like something. Is it maybe the like button? Oh, it's not, but uh, while I'm talking about it, if you wouldn't mind smashing the like button, I would really appreciate it. The sensor here is the Pixart PMW3360. It's an excellent sensor. It functions very well in this mouse. It goes up to 1000 Hertz for the polling rate. And this is the same sensor that Final Mouse uses in their mice, or at least the Air 58 and the Ultralight 2. We, I don't really know about the next one that's coming out, but these last two, it is the same sensor. So you're getting the same experience sensor wise, and it feels great for gaming. Tracking was great. Flick shots were great. I didn't have any jittering, jumping, nothing like that. Perfect sensor performance as far as I'm concerned. Let's take a look under the mouse at these white PTFE feet. These feel decently good. They're definitely better than any traditional Teflon feet that I've used before. However, they are very, very thin. So thin that I almost feel like, and I'm really not 100% sure here, but I almost feel like I can feel the shell scraping on my mouse pad just a little bit and just in some parts. I, I can't quite place it, but it feels like there is some additional friction happening there, especially when I am really pushing down on this mouse. I don't game like that, so it's not a huge deal to me, but I know that some people really push down on the mouse when they're gaming, and this might mess you up being completely honest with you. Also, if you have a really rough surface mouse pad, that might kind of eat away at your feet as well, and if it starts to hit your shell, you're just gonna have a terrible and inconsistent glide, and you're gonna hate it. The good news is, is that it looks like these feet will work with any Final Mouse aftermarket skates. So if you want to buy some hyperglides that would work for an Air 58 or an Ultralight 2, you can buy those and those should work on this mouse, which would fix this issue. Structural integrity here is fine. You're definitely not going to break it while you're just gripping the mouse and using it. Uh, there's also no rattle when you shake it around, so that's always good to see. And there's really not much creak when I do squeeze it. And really, if you're squeezing your mouse trying to find creaks while you're gaming, then you're just doing something wrong. Um, so d don't worry about it. There, there's no, no cause for concern here with the build quality. I'll go ahead and put the measurements up on the screen for you right now. Feel free to pause these if you need some extra time to look at them. Gripping it in my hand, I really love claw grip with this mouse. I'm generally more of a relaxed claw user, but I found that more of a tense claw was just more comfortable with this mouse. That being said, relaxed claw still will work just fine, as will fingertip grip, and if you have small enough hands, you can palm grip this mouse, but I really wouldn't recommend it. I don't really think it's best for that. I don't love this shell coating either. I'm actually definitely starting to feel some imperfections where my fingers sit the most. So left, right mouse buttons, a little bit on the right and left side of the shell too. Unfortunately, mostly due to this coating, the mouse does feel a little bit cheap in your hands. For $70, I would have liked to have seen a little bit of a better coating on this mouse. 
Left and right mouse buttons here are armor on 20 million switches. They sound pretty nice here, but unfortunately there is a considerable amount of pre-travel and a little bit of post-travel on these. There's also more lateral movement to the left and right than I would like to see when these mouse buttons are pressed down. Also, with the amount of pre-travel, you'd think that these would be harder to accidentally press than they are, but I found that I was misfiring every once in a while because I would grip the mouse too tight, and when I lift it up and put it back down, I would accidentally press one of these mouse buttons. So definitely be aware of that. Side button size, placement, and design all works really well on this mouse. They did take that directly from the final mouse mice, so just got to give credit where credit is due there. There's a little bit of pre-travel on the side buttons, but nothing that really bothered me too much. I would say that they're fine, not excellent, but not bad either. DPI button placement and sizing is also ripped from the final mouse mice, and that's fine here as well. I didn't have any accidental presses during combat or anything like that. The cable here kind of gives me some early Model O cable vibes, however there's not as much loose material hanging on the cable here. I didn't think I would like this cable at first, but after using it for a while I actually really like it. It's very lightweight, almost too lightweight, in fact I had a little bit more of this cable out of my mouse bungee initially, but it just got underneath the mouse and in my way, so I tightened that up a little bit and now it's just fine for me. This is definitely one of my favorite cables, surprisingly enough. It feels almost wireless because this cable is just so lightweight and barely noticeable. And again, this mouse does come with an extra set of feet, so if you would like to paracord this mouse, you'll have a backup set in case you ruin the set that's on here now. Software-wise, we can change the DPI steps, we can also change the liftoff distance, debounce time, and pulling rate. Now, unfortunately, I tried changing the DPI button binding to a number of things, like muting audio for instance, or locking DPI to 800, and I was running in administrator mode, I was doing everything right, but it just wouldn't save the change. No matter what I did, the DPI cycle button was still cycling through the DPI. So unfortunately, there's still a little bit of ways to go there with in regards to the functionality of the software, but uh, the other settings should work just fine. Really though, this mouse functions great without the software. So looking at this mouse as a whole, I do think that it's a really good option if you can look past the very thin feet and the kind of lackluster coating. I would love to see HK Gaming take a serious look at these feet because, and again, I'm, I'm not 100% certain here, but I'm fairly sure that I am getting some contact from the shell on my mouse pad, and that's just kind of unacceptable. So please take a look at that and fix that part of this mouse because other than that, like I really love the shape, I really love the sensor, I love the cable. There are so many good things about this mouse, but I'm worried that the coating and the really thin feet is just going to kill that for a lot of people because we shouldn't have to buy aftermarket feet in order to make this mouse usable. So again, H Gaming, if you're watching this, please take a look at those issues. That being said, I might actually keep this mouse around and use it as my main. However, I am definitely going to be getting some aftermarket feet before I do. Now, is this a good alternative to spending about $200 for an Air 58 or about $150 for an Ultralight 2? Yeah, I kind of think it is. For most people, unless you really, really want to have a final mouse, yeah, I think that this is going to be worth it. Just buy some aftermarket feet for like $10, $15, if even that. Swap those feet out and you should be fine with this mouse. Yes, the coating isn't great. Yes, it doesn't feel super premium, but the grips should help with that at least a little bit. And for $70, I really do think that this is fine value. Look, the shape is close, the sensor is identical, they actually have these mice in stock for a reasonable price, you don't need to play the stupid aim gods game, you don't need to deal with the pretentious free thinking marketing, that's all wins in my book. Alright everybody, that's going to go ahead and do it for me today. Thank you very much for watching up to this point, I really appreciate it. If you don't mind hitting that like button and that sub button on your way out, I would really appreciate that as well, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace! Dude, there's somebody in here. Let me deal with them, please. Then I'll deal with you. 
Oh! Wait! One more, one more, one more. There we go. Let's get it, dude.